Good evening, Church on the Go. I hope you're blessed in the Lord. Uh, I'm Pastor Curtis. I'm the assistant pastor here at Church on the Go here in Newmarket, Ontario. Our lead pastor is Pastor Stephen Coates, and he is on, on the side here, off, off camera at the moment. Uh, he's going to be uh, helping us to worship the Lord by shaking the tambourine, praise God. And uh, I hope you will help us worship the Lord as well. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, you'll hear the air conditioner in the background as usual, just keeping us cool. And uh, we have a graphics link. Uh, we have a Google Drive folder for the graphics that we're using for teaching, and we have a Google Drive folder for all the lyrics that we use. So feel free to click on those links in the description. Click See More to see our full description of the video, and you can click the links for what you would like to look at more closely on your own screen. You can do a split screen if, if you'd like on your own device, uh, and you can join us today in uh, in worshiping the Lord. I'm just going to get my pull my song up here. We're going, to, uh, we're going to pray to the Lord, and then we're going to sing. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you have, that you have uh, uh, made us your own, Father. You have called us uh, to make us your own, that we are your, your sons. We are your children. We are made uh, true to, Lord, we are made in your image, Lord, in the image of Christ, because, Lord, uh, Christ died in our place. He he took our sin upon himself and made us holy in his own blood. So, Father, we believe on that sacrifice, that finished work of the cross. Uh, Lord, uh, so uh, so complete and so thorough is the work that no other work has to be added to it. Lord, we just have to believe. So, Lord, we ask that you just lead us and guide us in this service tonight. Let your word be uh, taught and and received and absorbed by the people that are listening, both those that are listening now live and those that would listen later. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, and uh, guide us in worship, guide us in teaching, guide us in the study, uh, and, and encourage and edify your saints, Father, both those that are near and those that are far, because there's no distance with you, Father. You're always as close as the mention of your name. So we love you, we worship you, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I would like to mention that eventually this video will go up on, on Google as well. To For those that don't have a Facebook account, they can watch it for free on YouTube. And uh, they don't even have to be a member of YouTube. They can just watch it uh, on the public channel. So uh, we want to encourage you to, to participate in that. So take us to the river will be our first song tonight. The Lord is taking us to the city. Praise Amen. God. Take us to the river in the city of our God. Amen. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to verify that uh, we're just liking to. I did a test video earlier, folks. In case you were wondering what that was, that was just me making sure our live stream was still running, and it seems to be doing well. So I'm just going to make sure. Uh, just, just double sure here. Um, and yes. So, uh, welcome to those that are watching. I see you're commenting, so that's very good. Got a couple of you on there, so God bless you. Praise God. Okay, so we are going to go on to our first song, Take Us to the River. Amen. Amen. Once the technology works, we can go forward, right? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. 
sometimes in life in your soul but your spirit is going places yeah. and you can take your soul along around for a little ride you say soul come with us we're going on a spiritual journey amen down the river amen that's right going on the river hallelujah rolling on the river up to the city of god yeah. amen praise god now this is the newest song in our collection this is one that i actually wrote the first one's a robin mark song and this one is a Curtis Alexander song. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Um, some people might have heard this if they're local. If not, then just listen in and you can participate as you get to know the lyrics and, the, and the, how the song goes. Praise God. This, uh, this is a, a song about uh, the man, Jesus Christ, the book, which is the Holy Bible, and the city, which is the New Jerusalem, the bride, the mother of us all. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I just... Uh, I want to encourage you to uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord tonight as we uh, as we sing to the Lord. There it is there, man of book city. So I have three verses to go with the chorus. One is the, for the man, one is for the book, and one is for the city. All right. All right. The celestial city. The celestial city, that's right. That's a John, uh, that John Bunyan wrote that uh, in Pilgrim's Progress. Right. Christian was the character, and he was on his way to the celestial city. That's right, yeah. 
the man, the book, and the city, and uh, Pastor Steve was uh, using this title, so I kind of borrowed it from him, praise God, to write the song with it, hallelujah. So I appreciate Pastor Steve helping me with yeah. the encouragement and, uh, and the title, praise God, yeah. amen. It was a great title, I had to borrow it, <laughs> praise God. So, um, like, that's why you're seeing hashtags about the man, the book, and the city on Facebook right, right now, on the church group. So, praise God. All right, let's sing this. The man, the book, and the city. Aren't you glad you're going up to the city? That's where we're going permanently. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. we got to get excited about that. Because uh, nothing on this planet lasts. Yeah, that's right. But God's city, it will Amen. last. Hallelujah. She's the thing that lasts. She's, the, she's beautiful, and she will last forever. Yeah. 
Some of the similar same things in my song, uh, but Michael Carr has this excellent song that he wrote a number of years ago uh, that is really pulled out of Revelation 21, and uh, that's where we're headed. So I want to encourage you that God's going to dwell with us forever in the New Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. This has uh, all the relevance for today because our eyes should be ultimately focused on Jesus right. and on His city. Praise God. Amen. So let's sing this together. I'm just going to pull it up here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The lyrics look better sideways here. There we go.
you are good. God is good all the time. Blessings, folks. Glad to join with you again tonight, and uh, thank you for joining us here, those who are live now and those who will join later on. So here's our little November calendar, and uh, we're now halfway through the month almost. Uh, so tomorrow's the 15th, and uh, we thank God that uh, we've had a couple of uh, powerful meetings. We had a, a powerful meeting this morning with a a dedication of a young fellow and uh, yes, Mr. Little, Curtis had him in his class. I know, a little child. It was beautiful. Yes. Uh, he was really excited to play the drum. <laughs> yeah, he was a little loud, but you know, we got to expect that for little children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we uh, we had him, uh, taught him some basics of the Word of God Amen. and got him to join in with our music practice. Amen. It was really exciting. Amen. We were so really happy to have him. We had a wonderful dedication service. Yes. Great to have some of the folks that used to be with us before the pandemic and and yeah, they came back. back with us again They're back today. again. That's after right. Two, after two years. Almost. I know, I know. <laughs> yes, yes. Praise God. So, uh, as you can see, the rest of our schedule there for this month, uh, Brother Joe will be sharing later in the month, and Brother Robin Crosby as well. Amen. So, um, I understand that you posted uh, Jonathan's uh, message from Thursday night. Yes, yes. Jonathan had a great message about praising the Lord yes. in the midst of all circumstances. Yes. Forget not all his benefits. I think yes. that was Psalm 103. Yes. So, if you want to check that out, that's on the same ch uh, page that you're watching right now, if you're on Facebook. Yeah. So, our Church on the Go Facebook page currently has that video. It's on our YouTube channel, and the link is on Facebook. These folks are from Wales, and if you want to go on Jonathan's webpage and look at his ministry, it's jonathanedwards.com, I believe it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, it could be .org. You can ch check out .org. Right, as well. yes. Okay. Praise God. All right, so... Um, well, I'll just go to the, the uh, this little graph man here man to city. start with. So, uh, if you need to uh, contact us at all, we have the contact information across the bottom. Right for that little card. And uh, also, of there course, the teaching that we've been giving on the many members of the one body. Praise God. We make up the body of Christ. Amen. He's the head of the body. He is. Do you see yourself in Christ's body? You refer to his uh, something head there in the, on his his risen head. He is the risen heavenly head. Right. In, okay. That's the that's one of my verses in the song. The man that yeah, he's seated in, on the throne in the that's right. throne that's room right. of God. Yeah, he's the risen heavenly head. Amen. Amen. Because he's on the throne, you are uh, you are uh, destined to the throne. It's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. But, yeah. Absolutely. We're going to be rulers and reigners Amen. with him. Amen. That's awesome. Praise God. All right. So, uh, Paul E. Billheimer, years ago, uh, wrote a book called Destined uh, to the Throne, and, uh, or Destined for the Throne, it could be, and uh, the foreword was written by uh, Billy Graham, and a uh, wonderful book uh, on uh, the fact that because he sits on the throne, that's where we're headed. Amen. That's right. Praise God. So let's go to the graphic for tonight. Uh, it gives some of the aspects of what I'm sharing tonight. And um, praise God. Yeah, if we could just bring up that uh, new graphic there. There we go. Yeah. Now, uh, it, it doesn't appear too good on the screen because I've got it vertical rather than horizontal. Yeah, but you but, can check this out on your screen because it's on the Google Drive as well. But we had two columns here, basically. This column is. We've been talking about Beulah Land, and uh, I've mentioned a number of times that Beulah Land goes back a couple hundred years, and it's uh, maybe even more than that. Uh, yeah, it, we have songs about it going back a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the songs that goes back into the 1800s, 150 years old. Yeah. And, uh, and also uh, some aspects that we're going to touch on tonight, uh, how the Beulah Land is reflected in the Song of Solomon. So we're starting a new series tonight on the Song of Solomon, and I'm going to ask Mr. Curtis to uh, to go there. Now you can 
if you want to access some of these other references for these different points here, we've got these different points uh, historically, allegorically, or metaphorically, and uh, ultimately, and uh, some uh, cross references there that you can, you know, if you want to do your own research on it, you're most welcome to do that. Praise God. So tonight uh, we're going to begin with the Song of Solomon, yes. chapter 1. And uh, we're going to read down through this, but uh, I'm going to ask our brother here to do a unique thing that uh, he's never really done before in his reading. Exciting. And that <laughs> is that uh, when we are reading through this, this is the uh, first chapter, is the account of the historical account between uh, Solomon and his uh, love uh, for this Shulamite girl who is a shepherdess. So um, I mentioned this morning, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because uh, Curtis is going to be reading it instead of me. So we need to understand uh, that when we read the Song of Solomon, if you read it through and you think you have it all, you only have the historical love relationship between, Song, uh, between Solomon and the Shulamite girl who is the shepherdess, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but this book is multifaceted. It's a lot like an onion. It has many layers, layers to it. Yeah. So uh, the next layer is allegorical or metaphorical. And we'll get into that in a little bit. And then it gets into the ultimate realities of what will be fulfilled in yeah. the heavenly city. Heavenly reality. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we're going to read uh, through the first chapter, but we want to read the headings. Now we're reading from the New King James, and it has broken down between the conversation between the, the Shulamite uh, girl and uh, the beloved who is Solomon. And uh, also the daughters of Jerusalem are mentioned, etc. Okay, so mm -hmm. if you could just uh, point out the who's speaking. Here, yes, right? absolutely. So I'll I'll read the subheadings of yeah. which speaker is speaking here. Okay, because so it's kind of like a, a it's like a poem with with it actors. is poetry. Yeah, it yeah. is poetry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, now speaking is the Shulamite, the woman. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore the virgins love you. Draw me away. The daughters of Jerusalem are speaking next, and they say, We will run after you. The Shulamite begins again. The king has brought me into his chambers. The daughters of Jerusalem say, We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. The Shulamite says, Rightly do they love you. I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Now she speaks to her beloved. She's addressing the belo her beloved man. This is Solomon. This is Solomon in this historical context. Tell me, O oh, you whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon. Why, for why should I be as one who avails herself by the flocks of your companions? Now the beloved speaks. This is the man, the Solomon, historically. If you do not know, O oh, fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock, and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tents. I have compared you, my love, to my uh, filly among the pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments, your neck with chains of gold. Now the daughters of Jerusalem speak, and they say, in verse 11, We will make you ornaments of gold with studs of silver. Now the Shulamite woman speaks, while the king is at his table, my sparknerd, spikenerd sends forth its fragrance. A bundle of myrrh is my beloved to me that lies all night between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards of En Gedi. Now the beloved man speaks, and he says, Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes, the Shulamite says. Behold, you are handsome, my beloved. Yes, pleasant. 
Also my, our bed is green. The beams of our house are cedar, and our rafters are fir. Amen. Praise God. So a lot of people don't read the Song of Solomon because they don't understand it. Yeah. They try to they just skirt around it. Right. And sadly, uh, there are problems with the interpretation of the Song of Solomon because uh, going back to the ancient times, people came up with ideas that are not substantiated with the Word of God. So uh, we want to take our time walking through this uh, book and uh, looking at some of these uh, passages together. Mm -hmm. Now, historically, it is depicting here in this chapter the wooing and the wedding of a shepherdess by King Solomon and the joys and the heartaches of wedded love are expressed uh, throughout uh, this book and it begins in here of course in chapter 1 and um, Solomon is addressing the Shulamite uh, woman who is a shepherdess. She is a keeper of sheep. And um, uh, it's very interesting. They're talking about their wedded love, which brings us to the next layer. We said that this is a lot like an onion. If you cut down through the center of an onion, you get a number of different layers. That's right. And, uh, you know, um, to use a different topic, uh, if you go to the situation in Ireland, which I've visited many times, uh, people say, oh, they think they know everything that's going on in Ireland, all the troubles and this and that, it's a religious conflict. No, it's not. It's a tribal conflict. Yeah, you go back far enough. Then it's a political conflict between the Republicans and the Loyalists. Yeah. And then, on top of that, you've got the religious conflicts between the Catholics and the Protestants. Yeah, it's, an, it's another layered onion, basically. Yeah. yeah, so you've got all these different layers. Yeah. And, of course, that's true here in, in Canada, too, because we're a federal system. We've got provincial uh, jurisdictions and federal jurisdictions. It's a, Canada's an onion, too. Yes, we are. So, um, you know, this is what we need to understand when we read the Song of Solomon. It's, it's simplistic to think that you can just read it and understand the whole totality of it. If you want to understand the historical aspects of it, you can read it and understand it as Solomon, who is wooing this Shulamite woman, and then eventually, of course, they're talking about their married love together. And this is a going to the next level now, the allegorical or metaphorical aspects uh, that I mentioned here is uh, the whole aspect of the Beulah land story because Beulah represents married land. It does. No, Beulah means married land. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, when you, even when you read down through Edgar uh, Stites' uh, song, He's talking about uh, going to the heavenly land, and that's the ultimate uh, heavenly city, you know, uh, where we will live in that married land forever. Amen? Amen. So, uh, we're yes. still alive. Everything's well, yeah, good. Everything's good. We got, like, there's a lot of them watching. Okay. okay. Several so, of them are watching. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, that's great. so we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So, we want to... Uh, go into some of these uh, aspects of these different layers. We're going to go now and look at some of these uh, cross-references that deal with some of the allegorical aspects of Beulah Land. So, Curtis, we're going to go over to Isaiah 62, uh, verses uh, 4 and 5. Yes. Amen. And that's just next door to Song of Solomon. Yeah. So we're going to Isaiah 62, now, verses 4 you, you and 5. Could, you could read uh, the whole uh, from verse 1 to 5. Well, I find that helps. It, it gives you the context of yes. the fact that Jerusalem is the subject. Yeah. Uh, is the subject, and Jerusalem, using the law of first mention, is referred to as a her, right? Yes. So we begin to understand that, scripturally speaking, both uh, Israel and... Um, and uh, Jerusalem are referred to as her in Scripture. And so we need to, to understand that clearly. So let's go 
Uh, then to Isaiah 62, 1 to 5. Then. Yeah, so let's read this. Wait, we get the context. We get the, we're going to get the context here. Yeah. Isaiah 62, 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until, notice this, her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. She's a her. Yes. It's prophetically speaking. Yes. Remember that because God doesn't forget this. No. Verse 2. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. So we should just pause there and say that this is a prophetic statement of which city now? The old Jerusalem or the new Jerusalem? Right. It's the new name. The new name is New Jerusalem. Exactly. He literally put the word so new on there. So we're no longer talking about the city on the planet. We're talking about the city in the heavens. Come. Yeah. The okay. city in the heavens. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Very good. All right. So now we're in verse 3. You shall be a crown of glory. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephzibah, and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. So I just point out Hephzibah is actually defined by the line down below that says the Lord delights in you. That's what it means. Yes. And then Beulah is defined by the bottom line of verse 4 that says your land shall be married. Right. So Beulah means married land. Right. So all these years for 150, 200 years, yeah. all the... Uh, old timers, the the saints that went before us, were singing about married land. Yeah, Beulah land. Beulah land. It's married land. It's married land, right? So, just thought we'd like to point that out because we're not bringing up something new here. No, no. Uh, well, the, I think the date on my graph. 1876. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. It says it's 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 not even 1976. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, we weren't around yet. None of us were here yet <laughs> no. in 1876. Amen. Praise God. So that's good. So then we go on to, your land shall be called married, verse 5, For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Right. So there's a lot of prophetic power uh, impacted here in verse 5. Uh, when it's telling us, and if you use the law of first mention again, that the marriage that's going to happen is going to happen between the man and his sons. And the city. Yes. The man and his sons in the city. That's so right. Maybe if we want to just go back to that uh, previous graphic on the black cart. Yes. So Because this really helps. This, this marriage is going to happen between the man and his sons. Right. And the city. Yes. Right? His so in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, you got to remember the Song of Solomon and Isaiah are speaking allegorically here now to the married life right yes. the married land yeah and uh, and so in the case of Isaiah the sons were to marry Israel or Jerusalem right mm -hmm. in the natural in the natural we're talking about Amen. now when we push that forward to the end of scriptures last couple of chapters of the book of Revelation we begin to see the heavenly city being revealed, right? Yes. Okay, and so the man and the sons prophetically are being pronounced here as the ones who marry the city. Absolutely. So, um, so that uh, gives you a little bit of an understanding of one of the allegories or the metaphorical uh, prophetic pictures that is uh, established in the Old Testament. In order to understand the Song of Solomon, you have to understand, because it's a, an Old Testament story, you have to understand it in the light of the Old Testament scriptures. Absolutely. So, uh, let's um, take another uh, cross-reference here, Curtis. We're going to go over to Hosea chapter 2. We're reading verses 16 to 23. And in this passage, uh, we have the picture of Israel as the father's betrothed. Uh, bride, and um, this is another allegorical or metaphorical picture that's um, being revealed 
uh, to us. And if we want to understand, as I said earlier now, uh, the Song of Solomon, we need to understand that the Song of Solomon has it, got layers in it. It yes. starts off with the historical uh, layer of the love relationship between Solomon and the Shulamite girl, the shepherdess. So that is the basis, that's the, the, the bottom line, that's the foundation, right? That's the historical picture. Then you have the allegorical or metaphorical pictures of the Father's love towards Israel. Yeah. And then, ultimately, it will be revealed in the heavenly city. How many of you know that the marriage supper of the Lamb happens in the heavenly city? Right. So that's where it will ultimately be fulfilled in the heavenly city That's through right. our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's um, uh, read Hosea chapter 2, and we're reading verses 16 to 23. So chapter 2, verses 16 to 23. So Hosea chapter 2, verses 16 to 23. It's a minor prophet. Follow along with us. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband, and no longer call me my master. For I will take from her the mouth of the name from her mouth the names of the Baals. Those are false gods, by the way. Yes. And they shall be remembered by their name no more. Uh, in that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the birds of the air and with the creeping things of the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, sorry, yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. It shall come to pass in that day that I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. The earth shall answer with green, with new wine, and with oil. And they shall answer Jezreel, and I will sow her in for myself in the earth. And I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. Then I will say to those who are not my people, You are my people. And they shall say, You are my God. Amen. This is great. So, Jezreel means God will sow. Yep. So he, he's saying all these wonderful promises, and then he, you know, but I'm going to sow you into the earth. Yeah. Uh, when you sow the seed, it must die. Yep. In order that fruit comes forth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's sowing the Israel into the earth. And there's a reason why he's going to do that, and that is because even though he reached out to her as her husband, she continued on following all the Baals and all the other uh, idols. It's kind of like cheating on your husband. Yeah. Well, idolatry and adultery are simultaneous in the sense that one is physical and one is spiritual. But yeah. in, the, in the Word of God, uh, idolatry is like adultery. Yeah, it's the spiritual equivalent yeah. of adultery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. You're, you're, you're pursuing other gods. Yeah. You're, you're not, pers you're not pursuing your husband. It's spiritual infidelity. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. So, uh, and here I want to just note that at the end of verse 23 it says, Then I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people. Well, Peter refers to this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, when yeah. he talks about you know, we are a chosen generation, a, a holy, holy nation. nation, you know, and then he goes on in verse 10, a royal priesthood, I should meant that. Yeah. And then he goes on in verse 10 and he says, um, once you were not a people, but now you are called the people, people of God. God. Yeah, right. where did he get that from? So it? it's through Jesus that yep. we become the people of God. It has to be through Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um... Uh, this gives you uh, some of the aspects. Now, we've taught an awful lot on this in the past. Um, you know, Curtis has taught on this too on, on Tuesday nights. Uh, we're talking about years ago now. But uh, uh, as we have gone down through this, you see even in verse 18 when he's talking about I'll make a covenant for them. This is referred to by... Paul the Apostle in Romans chapter 8 when he says creation travails in pain waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yeah. You know, so creation is 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 groaning in pain waiting for the manifestation of the sons. That's right. You know, because uh, there's going to be peace. I'll make them lie down in safety. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So anything else you want to Well, I just wanna I just wanna highlight here that anything God wants to establish that's important to him, he establishes it by covenant. Right. So a lot of people today, and this is a whole other topic really, but since we're talking about marriage, marriage is a covenant. Oh absolutely. And so is this. That he's talking about a spiritual yes. marriage, which yes. is a spiritual covenant. It's just like the natural marriage, which is a natural covenant. Right. And so God deals in covenants. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, when you consider Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well. Yes. Okay, there's a prime example. So, you know, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, and he asks her, uh, oh, go call your husband. He already knows that she doesn't have a husband, right? Yeah. But anyway, so she says, so you, 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 I don't have a husband, she says. And uh, and then Jesus says, uh, yeah, you've had five husbands, and the man you're now with is not your husband. <laughs> In other words, there's no covenant relationship. Yeah. You're shacked up. Yeah. It's a common law marriage. Yeah. There's no covenant. No. No witnesses. No. No agreement. No. Nope. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So Jesus uh, tells... So he distinguishes there's a distinction. Yeah. He distinguishes between common law. Well, the and five her. that she had previously were her husband. She were they were married. Yeah. Now she has, Jesus doesn't say, oh, uh, yeah, there was a divorce or there was uh, death or whatever. Yes. I mean, but five ended. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That and, blew her out of the water. The fact that he could prophesy that. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and and now the sixth guy, well, you. He was basically saying, you're, you're lazy. You didn't even bother getting a covenant agreement here. Yeah, you're you stuck there. You just up together. Did you run out of steam there or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You did it right the first five times. I mean, you know, you, you, t you take uh, the other story is, of course, Mary and Joseph, of course. And um, the Bible says that uh, Joseph didn't want to take Mary as his wife. Uh, when he found out that she was with child, and uh, and then uh, eventually the angel came and so forth, and he took her as his betrothed bride, right? Took her, uh, took her as his wife. But then the scripture goes on and says in, in, in Matthew chapter one and two, there it says that uh, he didn't have any relationship with her until she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger. Right. So there must have been a covenant. Yeah. The covenant is what made them married. Yeah, so yes. they were married because of the covenant, not because there was sex going on. Right, exactly. Right, yeah, absolutely. So, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have clarity on these yes. issues. That's right, yeah, so th it needs to be taught. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so enough said on all that. So, uh, we want to uh, carry on talking about how the ultimate fulfillment is going to be uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to go to Matthew 5, uh, 17, uh, Curtis. Matthew 5 and 17. All right, follow along with us to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Praise God. Amen. Do not think. He's talking to the Pharisees, I think. Yeah. Because they were all trying to accuse him of going against Moses. Right. So he says, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right, right. Hello. Amen. So Jesus is going to fulfill all these things. Now, going back to the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3, there's a, a, a phrase in there that Curtis uh, read earlier, and it says, Your name is as ointment poured forth. Yes. And we used to sing a little chorus, that goes along like this. Your name is as ointment poured forth. Jesus, Jesus, your name is as ointment poured forth. Your name is as ointment poured forth. Now, Ultimately, we're not talking about historically, we're not talking about allegorically, we're talking ultimately, it is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. the Anointed One. Yes. Solomon was David's son, but yes. the greatest son of David was yet to come, his name is Jesus. Yes. His name is as ointment poured forth, Jesus. 
Jesus, your name is as ointment poured forth. Your name is as ointment poured forth. Now the anointing is pouring forth like fresh oil. Amen. Yeah. And the fresh oil brings healing. And it's a release of power and blessing upon our lives as we look to the anointed one for his blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So ultimately, it's going to be fulfilled. It's prophetically declared in verse 3 that it will ultimately be fulfilled in the anointed one. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. And of course, that word anointed mean is uh, the Greek word Christos, which means Messiah. Yep. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He's the anointed one. Amen. He's got, he's got the anointing poured on him. Amen. 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 So we're going to go to Galatians chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. Galatians 6, verses 14 to 16. The Apostle Paul talking about the cross, the importance of the cross. And of course, we know that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he did that through the finished work of the cross. Okay? But in this passage, you will also find uh, an important truth that's hidden that a lot of people don't understand concerning the Israel of God. Right. So if you could read that uh, for me, brother. Yes. Galatians chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. All right, let's read together. Galatians 6, verses uh, 14 to 16. But God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. Right. So the Israel of God is denoted by the new creation. Yeah. Now, the old Israel does not understand the new creation reality. Yeah. But the new creation reality, that you could just keep your finger there, but if you want to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17... In 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, you begin to see that uh, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away, and uh, all things have become new. Praise yep. God. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, well, this is a great one. Therefore, if anyone, anyone, mm -hmm. Jew, Gentile, Israelite, right. if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. Right. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right. In other words, you're not trying to put duct tape on the old thing. No. You throw no, it away. No, it's no, gone. no, no. This, this goes back to John chapter 3 and Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. Yeah. You know, and uh, in that uh, conversation, again, hold your finger back there in uh, Galatians yep. 6, but we're going to John 3. Yep. And we're reading the first uh, seven or eight verses there because uh, this conversation here, he's talking about the new birth. Uh, but you can read down through the whole chapter because you get down to verses 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? But, Absolutely. But in John 3, he's, he's having this conversation with this uh, rabbi that uh, comes there in, at night, right? Mm-hmm. And so John 3, verse 3 yeah. Yeah. says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. Jump on down, down to 5 and... Uh, yes, five, 5 to 8. Yeah. So Jesus answered and answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Right. So if we are born again or born of the Spirit, we're being born from above, and we become a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now going back to Galatians chapter 6, and verse 15, he says, For in Christ Jesus... Now we're talking about the ultimate realities here. Now we're not talking allegorical, metaphorical, or historical. We're talking the ultimate realities in Christ Jesus concerning the Song of Solomon. 
is that the Song of Solomon is fulfilled or Beulah Land is fulfilled in Christ Jesus in the heavenly city. Because he says, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. In other words, Jew or Gentile, doesn't matter. Right. Right? Amen. Okay, avails anything but a new creation. Right? Amen. So we need to be born again by the Spirit of God. Right. For as many as walk according to this rule, peace, the peace of God. You know, uh, 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 sorry, Romans uh, 14, 17 says that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? That's right. So this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So the Israel of God are those who are fulfilled through the seed. Who is Christ? And Amen. that's Galatians 3.16. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 29, he says, if you're Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Right? That's right. So uh, that's uh, kind of putting a lot into a, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, oh, but, that's, uh, that's quite a bit, yes. But, praise God. But it's true. Absolutely. Praise God. So uh, let's uh, carry on. Let's go over to Isaiah 54. Of course, as usual, we're not going to get through all that I wanted to share tonight, but that's okay, because uh, whatever we're able to share with you, yeah, hopefully it will scratch your itch and uh, you'll be able to <laughs> uh, be able to figure out some of the things that uh, we're talking about when it comes to the Song of Solomon. If you, you know, wonder what the Song of Solomon's all about, or uh, you think it means this or that, you need to understand it has to be considered in a variety of layers or yes. levels. Yes, right? you can't just simplify it down to one layer. Yeah, you're yeah. missing it's, out. Uh, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. Yeah, here a little, there a little. That's right, and uh, so forth. But in Isaiah 54, we have again more um, words concerning this uh, whole uh, betrothal of the Father to Israel. Yes. And uh, we're going to read verses 1 to 17 there, Curtis, if we... Okay, so Isaiah 54, turn with us to Isaiah 54. We're going to read from the top down to verse 17. Amen. Praise God. Which is the whole chapter. Amen. All right. Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children... Of the married woman, says the Lord, and get enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations. Amen. And make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. No, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Verse 9. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so I have sworn that I would no, not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. And there's covenant, of course. Yes, I, obviously they're fulfilled in who? The Prince Jesus of Peace. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, when he says here that, uh, I should just mention this, when he says that uh, this is like the whole co uh, covenant with Noah, with the, like the rainbow in the sky. Yes. He says, I'm not going to forget uh, this covenant agreement. Yeah. Okay, but uh, in then he, earlier on, you just read that uh, she was like a widow. Yes, she was. Yeah, forsaken. Yep. 
Okay, so because of their pursuit of the Baals, right? Because of their pursuit of the of the other gods. That's right. You know, God was angry with them because uh, it was like adultery. They were running around. Yeah, cheating. They were cheating with yeah. uh, cheating with other uh, false people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. false gods. Yeah. 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 So carry on. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, that's you. okay. Um, yeah. Says the Lord, who has mercy on you. I think I'm on verse eleven mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. Oh, does that sound like the book of Revelation? Sounds very similar to a city <laughs> with gems and gold. <laughs> wow. Read Revelation 21 yeah, for that. Yeah, how about it? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. That's true. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your, uh, and all your walls of precious stones, and uh, your, all your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. You shall not fear. And from terror, it sh for it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Uh, behold, I have created the blacksmith, who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We know this one really well. For every and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Right. So this is, again, the father in the betrothal to Israel, making this promise that will ultimately be fulfilled through the finished work of Christ yep. and the heavenly city. New Jerusalem, yeah. Yes. Amen. So uh, there's a lot there that we could take time to unpack, particularly going back to verse 5 where he says, for your, hus uh, for your maker is your husband. Yes. You know, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Uh, in order to understand, uh, now we don't have time tonight to read other passages that uh, would be helpful to understand. Hosea, for example, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 to 12 is another Old Testament passage. And then, of course, you can go to the book of Revelation. And uh, in Revelation, you can read uh, chapter 19, 7 to 10, which is the marriage supper of the Lamb. You can read uh, chapter 21. Verses 1 to 13, it talks about, uh, you know, the heavenly city being called a her. Yeah. Okay, so the law first mentioned says that the earthly city is called a her. The heavenly city is called a her. Absolutely. Uh, it's consistent. <laughs> God is prophetically consistent. How about that? <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. But uh, in order to understand uh, this business here, when he speaks in verse 6, For the Lord has called you like a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit. Uh, we need to take a quick look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. And uh, we may not be able to read that much there, Curtis, but uh, we could read the uh, passages that refer to the, um, to the divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe starting in verse, uh, going back to verse 1 and uh, yeah. reading down... Uh, um, oh, goodness. Uh, maybe one to... There's th verse 8 talks yes. about the certificate of divorce. Yeah, well, it, it starts back in verse 1. Yes, of course. Yeah, so if, if you'd like yeah. to just read. This is just for you to understand why God is making all these promises in Isaiah and Hosea, but it's because of uh, the fact that he actually gives them a bill of divorce. Yeah, it does. And so it, it can't be the father who is marrying them. He's divorcing them. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, but he says, you will not be forsaken. Yeah. So the promise is that it will be fulfilled, the marriage will be fulfilled through the son. Right. And his sons. Right. Which okay. reminds me of a parable, it's a big long parable, but there's one phrase in it from Matthew 22, verse 2, where a, a father prepares a marriage feast for his son. Yeah. The son is what fulfills that. Right. In the wedding. But the interesting thing is the son and his sons for us, Galatians 
Galatians 4.26 tells us that Jerusalem above is the mother, mother of us all. That was part of your song. It is. <laughs> it is. I put it in there because Galatians, it's in the scriptures. Yeah, Galatians 4.26. I don't hear anybody singing about Jerusalem being the mother of us all, the yeah. new Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. So I put it in my song. Yeah, absolutely. I tend to write songs that I've not heard about before. Absolutely. So, so uh, our time is gone. Yes. But we want to, to at least give you a biblical understanding of why uh, this is being referred to here. So yeah. let's go back to Jeremiah 3. Just read down as far as you feel comfortable. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So let's start in verse 1. They say if a man divorces his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man's wife, may he return to her again? Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers, yet return to me, says the Lord. Lift up your eyes to the desolate heights and see where have you not lain with men. By the road you have sat for them like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. So spiritually this is idolatry. Right. Right? It's the same as in the natural, a woman it's running around with all the men in yeah. the land. Right? It's, it's, a, it's a disgrace. So, uh, okay, so God's, uh, God's long-suffering towards them is astounding, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re remarkably patient with these yeah, people. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to verse uh, 3. Therefore the showers have been withheld, and there have been no latter rain, for you, have had, you had a harlot's forehead. You refused to be ashamed. Will you not from this time cry to me, my father? You are the guide of my youth. So uh, if I could just add here, the harlot's forehead is stubbornness. Yeah. You know, you're actually refusing to acknowledge your sin. Yeah. You know, you're, yeah. you're being stubborn or full of pride. Yeah. 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 So uh, he, he will remain, will he remain angry forever? Will he keep it to the end? And then uh, verse 6. Behold, no, verse 5 still. Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you were able. Now verse 6. The Lord said also to me in the days of Josiah king, the king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and over, under every green tree, and there played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Remember, because those two lands, Israel and Judah, were once a holy, right. one whole nation. So Israel, natural Israel, and natural Judah are the daughters of of, uh, of Jerusalem. Right, the heavenly Jerusalem, Mount yeah. Zion. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that there's the calling here. Yeah, come. Back. And that's why they're referred yeah. to as sisters yeah. here, because they were yeah. once one land that was yeah. split into two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then I saw that for all verse eight. Then I saw that for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. It's a two-stage process from Deuteronomy 24 that, uh, that when divorce is necessary, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but when it's necessary, there is a writing of the certificate. Yeah. That's the, the, the certificate. And then there's the putting away or the right. sending away. Right. There's two stages to that. Right. Uh, so he says here, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. Uh, uh, and then verse 9, So it came to pass through her casual harlotry. Casual harlotry. Yeah. Imagine that. Like, I just think I'll sleep with this guy. Like, wow. Yeah. That is so bad. Yeah, yeah. So, like, not even, it's just casual. Okay. Um, so then, okay, casual harlotry, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees, Yet, and yet, for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, says the Lord. So not a whole heart, but half a heart. It's a half-baked return. Then the Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, and that you have transgressed against the Lord your God, and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Return, O backsliding it, children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city, 
two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So the last portion of that verse is, is prophetic of the gospel. Yes. Because it says here, I will take you one from a city. So maybe only one person comes to Christ in a city. Yeah. Uh, and two from a family. Maybe not the whole family, natural family, comes to Christ. Right. There might be two people. It's called the remnant. Christ. It's the remnant. And I will bring you to Zion. This is all prophetic of the new creation that is fulfilled through the finished work of the cross. Yes, that's right. Amen. The heavenly Mount Zion. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so... Uh, in order to bring this to a conclusion tonight, I just want to say, due to this divorce, and, uh, you know, God goes and he sows Israel, the ten tribes, into the West, you know, yes, basically. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, uh, and it's for them to come back to Christ. Uh, and ultimately, we, we see that. That's another whole story. It can take me three hours to tell you. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. But uh, due to the divorce, the fulfillment now will happen uh, ultimately in the heavenly city as the lamb's wife or the bride of Christ. Amen. And that is gathered in, praise God. One from a city and two from a So family. Israel is not forgotten or replaced. No. Israel is going to be redeemed. Right. Divorced Israel can be remarried to the man, Jesus Christ. This is not replacement theology. It's not replacement theology. No, no. That's We're, right. We're, we're, we're talking about the redemption. Yes. You know, uh, whosoever will may come. Unless you look at this prophetic Old Testament stuff <laughs> and apply it to the New Testament, we're forgetting, it's like we're almost, the people tend to forget Israel. Right. But God hasn't. No. He no. knows where they are in the West. Yeah. No, you know? we, we've talked before on Ezekiel 37. Yes. We haven't got time to go there, but, I mean, that's a whole, uh, again, another picture of how God is going to raise up the dead. And he's calling the two sticks, sticks, or the two nations, Ephraim, which represents the ten tribes of Israel, Israel yeah. and Judah, and Judah. To come back together. Yeah. And that's formed in the cross. That's right. I don't have my little cross here yeah, so I can right. show that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Maybe next time. So our time is gone. Let's pray together. Father, yeah. we thank you, Lord Jesus, that your name is as ointment poured forth. Yes, Lord. And Lord Jesus, the anointed one, is Amen. going to fulfill all of this in Christ Jesus, ultimately fulfilled at the marriage supper of the Lamb in the heavenly city. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight that we are going up, Lord, to the heavenly city. Take us to the river in the yes. city yes. of our God. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we bless you tonight, and we thank you, Lord, that you give us more revelation Again, going back to the Song of Solomon, yes, there's a natural historical love story poetically expressed between Solomon and the Shulamite. But there's the allegorical, metaphorical truths of the Father and Israel and ultimately shall be fulfilled between the Son of God and His sons in the heavenly city. Amen. The mother of us all. So, Lord, we bless you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you have redeemed every tribe, tongue, and nation yes, Lord. through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. That each individual that comes to Christ, that believes on Christ alone for salvation, Amen. that trusted his finished work on the cross, it's completely finished. We don't have to do a thing. We just believe on the yes, Son, Jesus, Lord. who has died for our sins and rose again on the third day and is now seated in the heavenly throne room of God in, in the New Jerusalem. Lord, we just believe on Him and we're saved. So one from a, tro uh, one, from a nation, uh, one from a city and two from a family, the yes, remnant Lord. is coming back to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, the remnant of Israel, the remnant of the divorced tribes, the yes. remnant of Judah, the remnant of the Gentiles, they're all coming yes, to you, Lord. Lord. The nations are flowing up, heavenly Mount Jerusalem, yes, heavenly Mount Lord. Zion, I should say, sorry, to the top where the new Jerusalem is. Amen. And Lord, heavenly Mount Zion is where we're coming to. Yes. We've come to it because the head is already on the throne and we're the part of the body, the yes, feet. Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that you would encourage each watcher that's been watching tonight live and encourage each one that would watch later 
uh, whether on Facebook or YouTube, Lord. So we just ask a blessing upon you. Yes, Lord. Each one that's been watching, Father, encourage them with the Word of God. Encourage them by the Spirit of God that they would be edified in their walk with Jesus Christ. Lighten, enlighten our minds, Father, to understand more of your Word, more of your revelation, yes, more Lord. of your strength, the beauty of the marriage covenant on all levels. Yes, Lord. The natural level and the allegorical level and the spiritual ultimate reality right. of heaven. Amen. The beauty of those three levels mm -hmm. must not be forgotten. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we bless you. We worship you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we pray God's blessing on you this week. Yes. And God willing, we hope to see you next Sunday. God bless.